in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, who raised Jesus from the dead, be with you all. In the waters of baptism, Christopher died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. In baptism, Chris received the sign of the cross. May he now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. And in life, Chris cherished the gospel of Christ. May he now hear these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. Uh, we have our parish mass live streamed at 10 a.m. this morning. Uh, this earlier mass is a requiem mass for the repose of the soul of Christopher Mullins, known to uh, myself and my part of the family as Chris. His funeral service takes place at Enfield Crematorium later this morning. And due to the COVID-19 restrictions on public gatherings, uh, we have to wait until in fact the family can have a public gathering, a memorial mass. But there's no reason why we can't celebrate a requiem mass this morning in the presbytery. Uh, from my side of the family, from my dad Chris, my brother Brian and myself, we offer condolences to Eileen and to all the other cousins. I, I know you, you're all going to sing, I believe, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind later to, today um, across uh, uh, your, your prayers. I hope that goes well. We're offering this Holy Mass today uh, for Chris's soul and uh, for all of you who are able to watch this recording of the Requiem Mass. Eternal rest grant unto Chris, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray. O God, almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery your servant Chris, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Our readings uh, come from the readings for Holy Week, today being Holy Monday. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom my soul delights. I have endowed him with my spirit, that he may bring true justice to the nations. He does not cry out or shout aloud, or make his voice heard in the streets. He does not break the crushed reed, nor quench the wavering flame. Faithfully he brings true justice. He will never waver nor be crushed until true justice is established on earth, for the islands are awaiting his law. Thus says God the Lord, he who created the heavens and spread them out, who gave shape to the earth and what comes from it, who gave breath to its people and life to the creatures that move in it. I, the Lord, have called you to serve the cause of right. I have taken you by the hand and formed you. I have appointed you as covenant of the people and light of the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to three captives from prison, and those who live in darkness from the dungeon. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my help. The Lord is my light and my help. The Lord is my light and my help. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. For whom shall I shrink? The Lord is my light and my help. 
When evildoers draw near to devour my flesh, it is they, my enemies and foes, who stumble and fall. The Lord is my light and my help. Though an army encamp against me, my heart would not fear. Though war break out against me, even then would I trust. The Lord is my light and my help. I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Hope in him, hold firm and take heart. Hope in the Lord. The Lord is my light and my help. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Hail to you, our King. You alone have had compassion on our sins. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus went to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom he had raised from the dead. They gave a dinner for him there. Martha waited on them, and Lazarus was among those at table. Mary brought in a pound of very costly ointment, pure nard, and with it anointed the feet of Jesus, wiping them with her hair. The house was full of scent of ointment. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the man who was to betray him, said, Why wasn't this ointment sold for three hundred denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He was in charge of the common fund and used to help himself to the contributions. So Jesus said, Leave her alone. She had to keep this scent for the day of my burial. You have the poor with you always. You will not always have me. Meanwhile, a large number of Jews heard that he was there and came not only on account of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had risen from the dead. Then the chief priest decided to kill Lazarus as well, since it was on his account that many of the Jews were leaving them and believing in Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> to fulfil his plan of salvation, God grants a special mission to the servant of the Lord. This person plays a pivotal role in bringing about our redemption. His identity is unclear. Is it one servant or many? In historical context, it might be a king of Judah, it might be Isaiah himself, or it may be a prophecy of a future Messiah. The ambiguity permits some speculation. And when read through the lens of Holy Week, Certainly, Jesus Christ, as the servant, becomes evident. But if we move time forward and we read through the lens of Pentecost, the servant may be every Christian who has been granted a share in the Paschal Mystery, commissioned to make disciples of all the nations. The servant's humility allows him to establish justice on earth and be a light to the nations. Someone who opens the eyes of the blind and sets captives free. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. And this is why the servant must suffer, because surely there is always resistance when people are released from captivity. That same hostility is experienced by the church when she continues to proclaim this same light to the nations. Six days before the Passover, Jesus is anointed. It prepares him for burial, but it is not the anointing of repentance we receive just before our death, as we are fortified by the rites of Holy Mother the Church. For Jesus, it is something wholly different, 
a delicate expression of love. The anointment was expensive, amounting to the yearly wage of a labourer. And of course, the labourer deserves his wage. Judas, however, is concerned at the expense because he values money above his God. Judas hides his sin under the cloak of his false piety. He has no real concern for the poor. Being detached from earthly things allows us to be generous with God and with our neighbour. In contrast, Judas's prevalence to petty theft leaves him predisposed to greater sin. Ultimately, his betrayal and handing over the most precious item he could ever have a part in, his Lord and his God. As today's Gospel shows us, Following Christ requires more than a superficial, short-lived enthusiasm. Instead, it requires us to pick up our cross and follow Jesus to Calvary. Dear brothers and sisters, God the Almighty Father, raise Christ his Son from the dead. With confidence we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. For Chris, who, was, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, may he now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our brother Chris, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, may he be raised up on the last day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our brother Chris, may they be consoled in their grief by the Lord Jesus, who wept at the death of his own friend Lazarus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brother Chris. Cleanse him and all the faithful departed of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for ever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, 
for the salvation of your servant Chris. We beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns for ever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence for ever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Santos, Santos, Santos Dominus Deus Sabaiot, Pleni sunt a terra, Gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy, these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Christopher, with St Mary Magdalene, St Martha, St Richard, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Richard our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, 
gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Christopher, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, for whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On your stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On your stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On your stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let perpetual light shine upon Chris, with your saints forever, for you are merciful. Eternal rest grant unto Chris, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him, with your saints forever, for you are merciful.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Chris may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Our brother Chris has fallen asleep in Christ, confident in our hope of eternal life. Let us commend him to the loving mercy of our Father and let our prayers go with him. Chris was adopted as God's son and was nourished at the table of the Lord. May he now inherit the promise of eternal life and take his place at the table of God's children in heaven. I know that my Redeemer lives and on that final day of days, his voice shall bid me rise again, unending joy, unceasing praise. This hope I cherish in my heart, to stand on earth my flesh restored, and not a stranger but a friend, behold my Saviour and my Lord. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Chris, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you have bestowed upon Chris in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave.